Welcome everybody, uh, today I will be showing you the basic menus needed to play EU4 and uh, I will be using England to demonstrate it because, you know, don't feel like going Castile. So the, the biggest thing when new people get this game is like they, they feel overwhelmed when they see all these, uh, these menus, right? So let's just start from where my cursor is, left to right. So the first thing is uh, your treasury. So we money in this game is called ducats, and so you know, I'm not. I'm just gonna simple. If it, you see a plus sign, you're making money. If you hover over it, you can see very like basic things like how much money you're getting from taxation, production, trade, how much money you're losing. So you always you always want to see it at a plus but money in this game is really it's not the end of the world you can survive the next thing is your manpower so manpower in this game isn't how many troops you actually have like recruited on the field right now so we have 29k but we only have 10k manpower so manpower is essentially like your reserves so if we go into battle which I'll show you later on, but if we go into battle, when we take casualties, in order to refill the regiments here, it'll use uh, manpower from this pool. And if you hover over it, you can see how much you gain each month, which is pretty important. And obviously the bigger you are, or rather more development you have, um, the more manpower you'll gain. So it makes it kind of harder for smaller nations who won't necessarily get that much manpower per month compared to huge people uh, your next one is your sailors which is essentially the same thing as manpower but for your navy so you see the maximum you see how much you gain and then how much uh, how much sailors you use depends on pretty much if your guys are at sea at all so if they're on the sea they'll take some casualties somehow and um, most of the time you'll be able to just re you'll you'll make more than you lose so you won't have to worry about it but other times you'll have to dock up to make sure that you won't go um, to the you can't go negative but you need at least like a hundred to build a ship your next one is your stability uh, basically just keep it at one uh, there's events that will pop up that you can choose to get stability or they might make you lose stability but always have it at least at zero but you want to have it at one to get prosperity which is very easy to do so you just you would click that button if you had enough points so the next thing is the uh, corruption corruption is very it's not that impactful all you'd have to do is just raise this up and down accordingly so if you have higher corruption you'll have to boost this up but again this is just a very basic thing so you just literally that's all you have to do move the slider prestige is it's very impactful but also non impactful so if you see an event where you lose five prestige or you lose like I don't know like 50 ducats maybe more than that but prestige like you you it fluctuates so generally it'll gravitate you to get to zero but certain things will events winning battles stuff like that will take you higher but you see the effects so this is where it comes in kind of big because it has a lot of modifiers to everything so morale of armies obviously pretty good aggressive expansion impact all, all of those are pretty solid your next is your legitimacy um, there's events that will take you down, will tank your legitimacy, or if your ruler, hold on, let me get to the right part. If your ruler has a, um, I guess not, you need an heir, so. If that claim is strong, when he comes into power, you'll have 100 legitimacy. If he has like a weak claim, it'll be in like the 20s, I think, it'll be red. And then if it's like a neutral claim, can't think of one where who would have that but 
if you do, then it'll be like in the middle, like I think maybe 70, between 50 or 70, and the effects are right there. So again, legitimacy really won't have a problem. Power projection is just set your rivals, and if you declare war on them, embargo them, humiliate, all the stuff it says when you hover over it, then you'll get it. And power projection is, again, not that impactful, but if it's high, you can get a, a lot of sweet bonuses, which you'll want to uh, do if you really want to get good. So now we start to these, like, not the basic pop-up events but like these things um if it's red it's urgent if it's yellow it's not as urgent if it's green it's you know gonna survive so right now is england we have a looming disaster so we can just hover over it to see what would stop it or what would slow it down here uh the war of roses is a very standard event for england it's, odds are it'll happen but we can take steps to make it not happen uh your rivals just click here e4 kind of has like this system where it'll kind of it's a so it's a sandbox so you can do whatever you want but it'll kind of force you to do certain things so rivaling is kind of one of them um, so you can set those right at the start or if you really want to be pro you wait like a month because um, the rivals of nations can ally each other so what that means is see my rival Denmark is here so if we check his rivals anyone who he has rivaled we can ally a lot easier so same religion and then enemy of enemy so uh, rivals can ally each other and they'll get a bonus to their relations which will help you ally them so that they can help you kill them which is why you wait about a month so that your allies don't I mean your rivals sorry don't just ally each other um, also just right click to dismiss them uh, no debate in parliament this one's specific to England so obviously you just I don't know we don't really care just start one um, advisors are they're very good to help you catch up in tech and also get certain modifiers but they all depend on your economy if your economy can handle them which most Let's just say triple A nations, you know, the, the tags that you'll actually remember can actually afford these things. So you go to your court or just left click that and then you can hire them. So the, what it costs to hire them at first is there and then how much it costs afterwards. This is how much they add to your ruler's skill, which is how you catch up on tech. And then obviously they have their effects. Uh, you can... You can kind of like banish them so you can get people with uh different modifiers but whenever you see someone like this he's like scripted or like from an event so he's a lot cheaper for us so we're obviously going to want to pick him up uh, yeah so generally you always want to get level one advisors so you just get a basic bonus see another special guy or anything we specifically want so we don't really want anything, but I'm not gonna fuss. This is our um, our court, right? So you see a ruler, his um, his traits based on if you have the DLC or not. It's not that game breaking. Don't worry. You can uh, abdicate him if you have an heir, so you just take him out of power. And if we had an heir, you'd see his stats. And then if we had a consort like a queen, you'd see. Um, another important thing is that the numbers here translate sort of to what this is your uh, administrative monarch power gain here's like your bank of it so this is the worst thing you can get zero 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 but it's like default is at three so uh, getting an advisor will actually increase it the reason why it isn't doing it right now is because we're diplomatically focused. So if I do that, 444. Four, four. These buttons are to promote them, which will make them do their job better. Well, no, it won't increase their stat, but they'll do they'll give you an extra plus one. So if I promote him, then he he now does plus two. Simple. Um 
buildings um i'll be making a separate video but pretty much if you go on to taxation temples if you see anything above point 20 you should probably build it same with um the workshop manufactories yeah but these are sort of later games forts you obviously want to um upgrade the ones when you get later into the game and you typically want forts on defensive terrain like mountains or hills as they um if someone's sieging them out and like if you're fort so let's say they're sieging out montgomery but we're on the hills so if there wasn't a fort there i would take minus one because i'm attacking into the hills but since there is a fort there um uh, we become the defenders so that they will get the minus one even though they were there it's very important especially if you're in more uh, beneficial areas like switzerland it's part of the reason why even in real life they're very like they have really good defensive terrain these mountains here are amazing uh yeah the rest of the stuff you can just hover over but these are kind of the main things you want to focus on the uh next thing distributed secessions these are just these are about personal unions which i'll touch on in a different video but for what you need not to start you don't have to worry about that national decisions are like they uh these ones that are in like green can change it big time but they're specific to uh certain nations so we can form britain obviously if we hover over the question mark we can see what the uh, requirements are and then once we fulfill them we'd have to hit this so with the religion act as long as we have a theologian which is our advisor we pass this so those would be the results we're just gonna not do that so in order to like change the notification status just click there um so that would that handles it for us so now let's start to uh get onto the other so the menu so this is your court i kind of went over this before but advisors kind of like your family and you'd be able to also abdicate your heir your government is um all you need to know for this is that eventually you want to promote cultures because it'll help with uh unrest and like how much you can tax them stuff like that so if you have like a sizable percentage here you can promote them what we're currently full but you can promote them so that those provinces will not be well, well they will become welcomed essentially and they'll just produce better so you have to know diplomacy so right click on your nation you'd see this so you can just check your rivals enemies uh you know your air you can see your cbs by this thing your alliances so um another thing that's pretty important or not that important but you can see your c maria consort so we have a queen now but we have a royal marriage you can see guarantees which are just we'll touch that later vassals any like subjects kind of for aragon personal union so you can see those there um the economy let's just put it basically um so the corruption slider you'd want to keep missionary colonial mains up because if you can't afford it just don't do it but don't mess with the slider your army maintenance i mean you can turn it down when you're not at war so that you make a lot more money but this will completely like reduce your ability of your troops like they will not be able to fight they will literally die immediately because you're not really maintaining them so if you want to go to war or if it's if it's possible you kind of always want to keep it up fleet maintenance is sort of the same thing but a lot of countries don't even have to worry about that so we won't worry, we won't worry too much just know that if you're in the negative then you just can't support it trade trade is very complicated in eu4 i mean people with hundreds of hours still don't get it so you really won't be touching up on this too much uh your tech is when you have enough admin power diplo military power and you can also hover over here it'll, you'll see the expected like date year and stuff when you have that this will turn like light blue you left click and you can tech up 
uh, the modifiers for that are like this thing here so we're in Europe right now and this is the very start of the game 1444 so it's zero but as time goes on if people are ahead of tech so like once you know the tech ranges start to diversify it'll if you're behind on tech for something it'll be green and it'll show like minus five percent minus ten percent making it cheaper so you can catch up but the same goes vice versa if you're ahead on time you'll get like a plus ten percent red so it's ten percent more expensive and then with the institutions it works the same way as being behind on technology so for each institution it takes up fifty percent so if like we didn't have the feudalism for example which all of Europeans have that and even a lot of other people but if we didn't have that we'd see 50% right here automatically making it uh, a lot more expensive your ideas are they sort of uh, cater to how you want to play so all this stuff here I'll, I'll make a different video touching on what you'd want to pick for what what are like sort of the meta options but you can see when you take them and then they cost the same points as the tech so you kind of want to balance between them but these offer like bonuses to you and policies eventually your missions so obviously um, it didn't always used to look like this if you've seen this game before but the missions again kind of push you into a certain way so if we fulfill that we'll get these claims which allow us to take over uh, Britain, the British Isles, you know, Scotland. And um, a lot of them are generic, so like these ones, very generic. You can tell if it's yours because the flag will be there. It also says when you hover over. So you kind of want to do your missions, they'll give you a lot of bonuses and just help you to sort of achieve what your nation is capable of. Um, so over here we already went over the decisions when you complete idea text you can take policies but that'll be later into the game stability and expansion when you're at war you're like losing badly you'll have war exhaustion so you can buy that down or whenever you're at peace it'll be like that certain policies and ideas can change that but you don't want to be high like above eight is pretty bad but you can you can take a lot of hits in this game stability you always want to be up on Whenever you get a col colonist, you'll have to choose one of these. The best one is coexistence because they cannot rise up. If we had any rebels right now, we'd see them here. So now we're on to the religion tab. If we had any provinces that were not our state religion, which is Catholic, then we could um, send a missionary there for money, a certain amount of ducats a month, depending on development, all that jazz. Then we can see our tolerance, which is sort of it's not as important again but if you're tolerant it makes if we had these certain provinces like Coptic and Orthodox in our state and it was how it, we are like towards them tolerance right now they would be negative because we don't tolerate that but if you were like a more peaceful more tolerant society and it was positive then you wouldn't take any negatives so I mean that's kind of up to you military tab so up here's the professionalism depending if you have the DLC the way you get in pro professionalism is you have to have a leader and you have to drill here and then they'll do this animation uh, your you can kind of select your cavalry uh, infantry artillery which when we unlock that you can see all this jazz but pretty much if you a couple things you'll want to watch out for is the amount you have here which you can easily tell um, this is your combat ability so you, some nations just have better things some ideas can give you better modifiers your shock fire but that's in-depth stuff uh, generally you want to pick at the start of the game the higher offensive morale but that's just in general you can see your naval units how much you have um, your leaders here so you always want to attack with a general it's just kind of silly to not you can make your ruler you can make your heir you can make you just hire like new generals you can also get admirals and if you have a certain I the idea group you can hire explorers and conquistadors uh, another thing is um these pips 
just know that generally you want higher you want a lot more pips so in order to get that you need to have higher army tradition which is made from just more forts per land so if you have a lot more forts it'll be higher as well as taking certain ideas but just generally try to get that up your morale uh, very important to try to keep increasing it by taking ideas stuff like that uh, your force limit how much you're capable of supporting without paying a lot more extra and then the rest of this is just kind of more in-depth you don't really have to know that if we had subjects so I'll just make a subject we'll make meat why not so where are they I have no clue so perfect time you can just click here check where they are okay so that was our one of foothold in Ireland so now you can go here and there's different types of subjects vassals are like the most common but your options here you won't really do much here besides I don't know if you want a grant province you can uh, placate their rulers to decrease their liberty desire if the liberty desire is above 50 then they'll want to revolt against you potentially declare an independence war and with support from outside nations it's completely possible that they will and e4 you want to try to be efficient you know min max things so you definitely don't want to have to fight an independence war for your uh freaking subjects and your last part is your estates so depending if you have the dlc or not you can mess with the estates so you'll see like really experienced players they'll do like their whole like the clicks just to get the hundred you know diplo uh diplo admin military and then for certain nations there might be like four of these typically there's three which is the burgers clergy and the nobility and then it's equivalents for other nations but you want them to be um loyal you don't want them to ha have high influence really but you need them to be loyal or else you'll lose these positives um Let's see, so really quickly we got the, this is where you build your units, so you can spend 10 ducats, we can build infantry. As you can see, it saps the manpower by 1k. There's also mercenaries, which cost a lot more money to first build and a lot more to maintain. But they form a lot quicker, so you can see on this menu thing here, 14 days, 59 days. Also, this menu is sort of, sort of like a shortcut. So you can just see your quick estates, your navies, your armies, you can click on them. Your merchants, where you're collecting, and then your diplomats, where they're at. So if we just want to improve relations, then boom. We're going up. Um, your next one is the same thing, but for your navy. Um, you can create a template, but it's really not that big of a deal again. Um, these are your main like combat ships you know the toughest one these are like more of your trade ships but these can also fight galleys are for fighting but they're more like inland seas like the Mediterranean um, and then the last one are your transports and then again with the DLC Golden Century you can build a flagship which enables you to get different modifiers here which cost more too just so you know you can also uh, change the type but that's not the big of a deal when you take land you'll have to make it a core which a core is essentially like putting in your government like your police you know you're like I don't know freaking court or something like that like just think of it like that if we roll over Leinster here and we take it out and it's ours when we occupy it we have to like you know really put it in like our administration and stuff like that to, until we can actually get the benefits of the taxation production so that's how I'd always explain that but you also want to try to they cost admin points and you want to try to do it as soon as you take anything this is like the same thing from the menu over here the religious menu if we had provinces to convert we would do it there but uh, your local autonomy don't even mess with this unless you have high rebels if you have high unrest and you see rebels popping you can click this plus sign and then it'll lower it hopefully uh culture don't even worry about that buildings we went over it 
development. Again, don't worry about it. It's very basic. Estates. This is to give them land, which will make them more loyal. Um, it'll give them more influence and more land. So sometimes they require a certain amount of land. Um, and it'll be red if something's not right, so you have to try to fix it there. If you have a certain DLC, you can just kind of quickly scan what will, you know, what nations will do what. Um, so, see, no one would want to become our vassal at all. Well, the, actually, I take that back. See, I wouldn't have known that, but there's certain requirements, but we can learn that here, and then there's just... It's, it's like a quicker way, faster. Exploit development, don't even worry about that. Uh, another quick thing. I don't know what your guys' things are set on, but you really want to be playing on political. Um, another thing you can go to, you want to add the diplomatic so you can see, so it'll highlight things depending on, you know, what relations they have to them. The HRE is probably there just so you can see where the HRE is. That's a whole another fucking ocean of things. Then you have the colonial map mode to see where you could colonize, which I'll touch up on that later. And also trade goods, so you can quickly see. So obviously gold is very valuable, but we also know that uh, grain is not as valuable as like wine or sugar. So that's another thing to help you see to potentially get more money. And it's about one more thing if you go here to geography, simple terrain. So if you don't want to just hover over your thing, like the political map and see farmlands terrain, then go to simple terrain and you can see it's like color coded. So you can see here in Austria, a lot of mountains in the Alps. Uh, Morocco here, I don't know what mountain range this is, but more mountains, so t potentially defensive terrain. Um, another thing, very key, is the ledger. You can actually check on a lot of the armies in this game from here. This is sort of like your database or whatever, and it works for a lot of things like your... So you can check other countries, like menus like these that you can see. Uh, yeah, you can check armies, navies, bunch of that stuff, how much money they're making. Uh, very key, if you want to declare war on a country, you can always should check that to see how, um, what kind of position you are. If they outnumber you by a lot, then you just got saved from potentially a devastating war. Um, the history here, sometimes kind of fun to read through it, see what you've done. And triggered modifiers, you can see mainly the ones I can really think of that will happen to you is anything related to like the Rome or the Pope. So if you subjugate the Papal States here, you get minus uh, two diplomatic uh, reputation. If you like occupy Rome, you lose a lot of stuff. So that's kind of nuisance like you you won't really be checking that but just in case and the other one that's pretty important is you hit f to get the fine province um especially if you're not playing like i don't know and if you're not like good with geography if you don't know where things are you want to just be able to type in certain things so not bad sorry about that so london so if you didn't know where that was you could find it and this applies more like i don't know in germany where there's like foreign names or africa where you won't just immediately know oh jofra you, you know what i mean like you won't really know where that is so just hit f and you can find it um holy roman empire if you're not in there don't worry about it and uh, if you're catholic you get this menu you can spend your points here but i'll explain on a different video so yeah it's a lot to take in but when you you know you've played the game a little bit you kind of have a feel and it'll all just come natural so yeah that'll essentially wrap up our part one very long i'll have timestamps below if you want to go back to certain specific sections but this was kind of a very basic guide 
sometimes you'll see like guides that don't boil it down to really what you need to know they tell you what it does but what you actually will apply so that's what I've got, gone ahead and done here tell you what you'll actually need so um yeah I'll see you guys stay tuned for more videos peace